How's it going? I'm Mark Anderson with the Grill Dads. Excited you've joined us today. Thanks for participating in the race. Now we're gonna show you some fun things to do with some different cuts of beef. Actually, we're gonna do all one cut of beef. We're gonna do beef short rib. We're gonna do it three different ways. This first one is just gonna be a nice porter roasted. We're using this sockeye. A nice porter roasted beef short rib. It's like a beef short rib version of a pot roast. Uh, we're gonna then use the leftovers for that to show you how to do uh, hunter's pie, which is the beef version of shepherd's pie. And then one of my favorite things in the world, which is pulled beef tacos. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first thing I did, I got my grill all set up here, 325 degrees. So we've got carrots, flour, mustard, garlic, bay leaf, salt, thyme, chicken stock, onion, the beer, the beef, and the Grilled Dad's Red Tuxedo Rub, which you guys should have as well from your race pack. So when you're looking at these beef ribs, and I have nine here, look at this marbling, right? You want lots of little stripes of fat. You don't want giant chunks of fat because um, that's just going to be grizzly and a little gross. So let's start off by giving these guys a little seasoning. Uh, you want them to sit in the fridge for about two hours, ideally. You can do this right before you brown them, but um, it's going to be a lot better if you give the meat an opportunity to absorb. All right, let's talk about the spice. This is the Grill Dad Spice line. This one's Red Tuxedo. This is my daily driver. It's salt and pepper, a really good balance of salt and pepper. It's got kosher salt, so it absorbs really nice. And then it has a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, and it has a three chili blend. Crushed red pepper, it's uh, cayenne pepper, and a little bit of Szechuan peppercorn. This is meant to just add a little bit of interesting flavor. So, uh, yeah, even my six-year-old can eat it. He loves it and he hates spicy food. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna season all sides. All right, we have these all seasoned up now. And one of the reasons why you want these to sit a little bit uh, is the salt's actually gonna work as a desiccant. It's gonna draw some of the moisture out of the meat and that's gonna dissolve the salt and then it's gonna reabsorb. And it's actually gonna make that crust, that spice stick to the outside. And um, whereas if you threw these in some stock right now, uh, a lot of the seasoning is just gonna come off and float right up. So we're gonna give these a second to sit up in the fridge. We'll be right back. All right, now we're gonna brown these guys off. That's gonna do really one main thing, which is add layers of flavor to the entire dish. So the fat is where the flavor is and you also wanna flavor the fat, right? So we're gonna start off by browning these off in here and then we're gonna deglaze the pan and then we're gonna use that to make our braising liquid with the carrots, the onions, the garlic, all that fun stuff. So um, the other thing is it gives a nice flavor to the meat, that Maillard reaction on the outside is super tasty. Um, all right, let's do it. Dutch oven here. This is a Lodge, got it at Target, it's awesome. Um, it's huge uh, and it's an enamel coated cast iron Dutch oven, retains heat, super even, awesome for braising. Um, and you wanna do everything in the same pot because there's gonna be lots of flavor left in the pot from browning the meat and you don't want that to be left in the sink, you want that to be in your stew. All right, let's do it. I'm using sunflower oil. You don't need that much because uh, there's a decent amount of fat in the actual beef. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this, should be good to go. Crowd the pan, the steam can't really escape around the sides, and instead it's gonna be trapped between the pieces of meat. And steam is the absolute enemy of crust. So you'll never get that beautiful brown, delicious crust on the outside if it's all steamed up. All right, this is gonna take a minute. <laughs> That's gonna be good. You can see there's still a little oil in there and a little fat from the beef. Now uh, we're gonna start building these incredible layers of flavor. So we're gonna start out with onion. By the way, this is meant to be rustic. You can do giant pieces, no need to get super fine with that. 
Gonna hit this with a little salt. I'm gonna add a couple sprigs of thyme now. I'm gonna turn this down to like a medium low. All this beautiful garlic, I'm gonna add that in. It's gonna give it a quick stir and then I'm gonna start making the roux. Oh my God, that smells good. We're gonna add a few tablespoons of flour. Uh, this is gonna make our roux um, and this is gonna help thicken the sauce up. And then we're gonna cook out some of that raw flour flavor, which we do not want. Sockeye porter, delicious in stews and to drink. You can hear that sizzle. You don't really know how much braising liquid you need uh, until you get them all in there. So I'm gonna add one can of that for now. And I'm gonna add two of the four cups of chicken stock. Now you can use beef stock for this, but for me personally, uh, beef ribs, they're such a rich, deep flavor, plus beef stock makes it really heavy. Chicken stock is gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit crisper. Um, and actually I think you can taste the beef rib better. So I'm gonna pour half of that in. I probably put three cups in there. Now, this is gonna give it a really nice depth of flavor, help emulsify the sauce a little bit. You can use whatever mustard you want. I wouldn't use yellow mustard. I would use Dijon, or you can use some of this whole grain. Not a lot, just need a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add the second beer. Go ahead and add two bay leaves. So we're gonna go ahead and add our beef ribs back in. Look at that beautiful char on those. This is a charcoal grill and I have it set up for indirect heat. You can see it has this stone plate in here and the charcoal directly underneath it is what is lit. So it's gonna be a nice, even, indirect heat. Got it set up for 325 degrees. We'll see you in a few hours. Yeah, yep. You're looking for a consistency of room temperature butter with the probe. Usually between 203 and 210. And look, we're right in that zone. All right, we are all done. It took about just under three hours. All right, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna skim some of the fat off of this. You can serve this with really a bunch of different types of starches. You can put it over potatoes. It's awesome with polenta. Um, we love rice and I love it when the rice soaks up some of this broth. So we're gonna go jasmine rice we made with just a little bit of salt and butter. There we go. So now I'm just gonna push this down into that rice. Now, a lot of people ask why stuff at home doesn't always taste as good as it does at the restaurant. One of the main reasons is restaurants season before they cook and after they cook. Beautiful orange and purple carrots. You want a little fat? I'm gonna go with some nice olive oil here. This is where you wanna use the good stuff. We do a little bit of kosher salt. Again, never table salt. Let's make it nice and pretty. Go nice and high. This is just parsley. Look at this. Nothing better after a nice run in the fall. I mean, this beef is rich, but it's actually pretty healthy. No sugar. One tablespoon of flour. The only challenge with this is gonna be trying to figure out how to save enough 
for the shepherd's pie. All right, now let's make some tacos. Again, mise en place. Get everything prepped and ready to go, right? So we have our onion, our garlic, we have a couple bay leaves over here. We have sunflower oil, salt. We have sockeyes, Lonesome Larry. And then we have our beautiful beef. Um, and again, these are our beef short ribs. They're double R ranch. And um, you can see there's not huge chunks of fat, right? It's just nice, even marbling all the way through. Uh, that's gonna make for a beautiful, tender, super rich, gorgeous bite of beef. Not all salt is created equal. This is very important. It's gonna look like I'm putting a lot of salt on because I'm using kosher salt that is very mild and it's a shape that allows it to break down and absorb into the meat very easily. If you were to do this with, let's say, iodized table salt, it'd be a terrible tasting dish because it would taste like pure salt. And the higher you are, the more even it is. This setup should look familiar, very similar to how we started the other one. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of neutral oil. Not a lot, because again, these beef ribs have a lot of fat that's gonna render out and they can brown in their own fat, which is great. Um, check this out. You can see, I was talking about how the seasoning absorbs really well. Half an hour ago, the salt on here looked like snow on the top because there was so much. And you can see how it drew moisture out of the meat it then dissolved, now it's reabsorbing itself back into the meat. These smell good. Oh yeah. Golden brown and delicious, right? So let's talk about the sauce. Uh, we've got the fat in there, guajillo chili. None of these are very spicy, by the way. Ancho chili, this is a little more dark and smoky. The guajillo is gonna be a little more fruity. They really complement each other well. And then we're gonna use some of the Grilled Dad's Black Tuxedo. Uh, this has salt in it, um, so we're gonna use that to season the adobo sauce that we're making. Um, and again, you wanna season every single layer. Uh, you don't wanna wait till the end to season all of the things at once, when, once all the liquid is in there. You wanna season every single layer so everything can be standalone delicious compiled together. So again, this one is gonna add a really nice, rich depth of flavor because it has activated charcoal and Mexican chocolate. Also has a little bit of guajillo and ancho in it as well, uh, but it's really that Mexican chocolate and that beautiful kosher salt that we're gonna get out of this. All right, so we're gonna go in with our onion first. You can see there's a little bit of brown color on the onions. We're not caramelizing the onions. This is actually just a little bit of color it picked up from uh, the oil and those tasty bits on the bottom of the pan from the browning of the beef. Uh, you're not actually looking for a caramelized onion here. So what we're trying to do is cook these just long enough that they get a little soft and we cook the raw onion flavor out. Uh, now we're gonna go big on garlic, go big or go home. We've got six cloves here. We're basically making a homemade adobo sauce. I'm gonna turn this off because the pan is gonna retain some heat so I don't overcook the garlic while I get the chili. Ancho, again, smoky, nice chili flavor. Uh, gonna do about three tablespoons of this. The guajillo, actually I'll probably do three of these as well. Then we're gonna do one tablespoon of the Grilled Dad's black tuxedo. Again, Mexican chocolate, salt, uh, activated charcoal. This is going to give a great color, a uh, really nice deep rich color. It's also going to give uh, some of that earthy bitterness from the Mexican chocolate. So we're just going to do one tablespoon of this and again we're getting salt out of this as well so we don't need to add any other salt during this layer. If you could smell that. All right I'm going to turn this back on low. Now we're going to deglaze the pan with some of this uh, awesome sockeye. This is Lonesome Larry. Um, there's a lot of deep earthy flavors in here, so we just want a nice bright beer for this. Uh, lager's perfect. So 
the deglaze again this is gonna the liquid's gonna heat up and it's gonna steam all of those tasty bits off of the bottom you can see it all coming up Scrape, scrape, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. You want all of that flavor to come in. Uh, I'd either use water or chicken stock. I'm gonna use chicken stock now. Uh, you can use beef stock if you want, that's more traditional. I just like the lighter flavor and I, I believe it or not, I actually think that uh, using chicken broth makes it easier to taste the beef. Um, all right, let's put it in. Add a couple bay leaves. Let this guy come up to a nice simmer. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of Mexican oregano. I'm gonna put this into the pellet smoker at about 325 to 345 degrees. Probably take two to three hours. You wanna wait until the meat is about ready to completely fall off the bone. Um, let's do it. All right, got the pellet grill. It's at 340 degrees. Got it a little hotter to start because it is gonna lose a little heat when you open the lid. Um, if you want a smokier flavor, you can take the lid completely off. Uh, you just need to make sure to take a look and see if you need to add more water or more stock. Um, I do a little bit of both. The family here doesn't love lots of smoke flavor. So somewhere in the middle of the cook, I'll probably take that lid off for about a half an hour, but for the most part, I'll keep it shut. Look, the weight of the probe goes through on its own. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Cool thing about this taco recipe, is you can do everything we've done so far the day ahead. <laughs> it's awesome. That is the clean bone club right there. Uh, I'm gonna go strain this real quick. Um, just gonna run it through a little fine mesh strainer. All right, I don't know if you guys can see how clear this is, but I ran it through a nice little strainer. Um, that's the traditional way to do it. Uh, we're gonna go back in the hot pot with it. This is how you know this is done. Are you ready? This one's gonna be really hard to get out. Um, and then there's this little piece right here of cartilage. I like to get rid of that. I mean, if you see any other huge pieces of fat, you can kind of get rid of those. But this is what it should look like. I mean, it just shreds like butter. Look at this. All right, so I'm gonna take just about one ladle of this broth. I'm gonna do two. And also too, you gotta to check the seasoning on the meat. Wow. These are flour tortillas. Traditional would be corn. Uh, we love flour tortillas here. So we're gonna do it in the flour tortilla. The cheese that we're gonna put in there, again, cheese probably not necessarily traditional, but depends on who you ask, right? So this is Oaxacan cheese. It's made by Casica. you get it at Albertson, it's super easy to get. And then I just run it through a little box grater. Very similar to shredded mozzarella if you wanna use that. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a little cheese. We're gonna get some of the meat. We are going to fold it over. Ready? We're gonna dip. We're going in.
Now this is gonna crisp up and be <laughs> delicious. All right, let's keep making them. There we go. Look at that. You want some fresh onion? Some fresh cilantro. This is cotilla cheese. It's like a cross between feta and Parmesan. It's delicious. Forgot the most important part, the tapatio. Make sure I got that good. The acid in the lime is gonna wake up the whole dish. I'll take a look under the hood real quick. Oh, look at that cheesy goodness. Cheese, got some of that consomme in there. Got that beautiful shredded beef. 800 degrees right now, but I'm going in. It's bright from that cilantro and that acid juice. Super crispy outside. Gooey cheese, rich beef. It's everything you ever wanted in a taco. One of the things I love about doing these big braised dinners, whether it's pot roast, short ribs, or doing a big turkey on a Sunday, if you're smart, you can make a lot of different meals throughout the week. So yesterday's uh, Porter Bray's short ribs is today's hunter's pie. Hunter's pie is shepherd's pie, but with beef instead of lamb. So we're gonna make the potatoes to go on the top. Super simple. You guys can see hot potato, but these are Yukon Golds. I left the skin on. So I washed the potatoes, quartered them, boiled them, a little bit of salt. You do it until it's fork tender. Um, and again, taking a probe or a fork, I think the best analogy is it's ready when it feels like you're sticking the probe into room temperature butter, right? So now these are still warm uh, and you wanna do this while it's warm, otherwise they get a little gooey. Here I have a little cream. I'll show you uh, basically what I did with this, a couple cups of cream, I boiled it, uh, which reduced it, and I threw some thyme in there to infuse the fat, the milk, with that flavor to go through the potatoes. Uh, we have some room temperature butter, and then we have my seasoning, the Grilled Dad's White Tuxedo. Again, these tuxedo rubs, they're salt and pepper first, so you don't need to add salt and pepper plus other ingredients. You don't need to have a bunch of different bottles out. So this has uh, dehydrated sour cream, horseradish vinegar, um, plus the white pepper and the kosher salt. It also has some chives in it. So this is a potato's best friend for three pounds of potatoes. Uh, I'm gonna add all of the cream. Uh, I'm gonna add, so I've got one and a half sticks of butter. I'm gonna do one stick for now, Let's see how it looks. Again, these potatoes, if you like them creamier, put more in. If you like them stiffer, put less in. It's really up to you. These potatoes to be, uh, a little looser um, for a few reasons. One, you're gonna bake them, so some of the moisture is gonna evaporate. evaporate. Um, and then the other reason is it's a lot easier to spread on the top of the pie. Loose, but staying together. So I'm not gonna add the rest of that butter right now. Uh, we have tomato paste, flour, we have some peas here. Um, all I did, they're frozen peas, all I did was uh, run them under a little bit of warm water. Uh, so they're not really cooked, but they are room temperature. Uh, we have the meat. I'll show you what I did here. Uh, so last night when we were done eating, I pulled the, the short ribs out of the sauce and stored them separately. It should be really easy for me to grab them and separate them like this. Got rid of the bones, got rid of any huge chunks of fat. <clears throat> Here's our porter liquid, braising liquid. Um, so a lot of fat came to the top and solidified in the fridge. I removed that. Um, so I'm gonna take two tablespoons of butter. 
tons of flavor. So this is tomato paste, super concentrated. Uh, I'm gonna do probably about two tablespoons again. Uh, so what we're building right now is a roux. Roux is equal parts fat and flour. So we've got two tablespoons of butter and then we're gonna do two tablespoons of flour. And then uh, when you add the tomato paste, they call it brick roux, uh, which is very common um, in Creole cooking. Let me go ahead and add two tablespoons of flour. So what this is gonna do, not only is it gonna build flavor, but it's going to thicken the sauce a little more, which is actually already pretty thick because of the flour we put in yesterday. Um, but we need it to be just a little thicker so we don't end up with a, a soupy stew at the bottom. We want it to really come together. Uh, just a little pinch of salt. Oh my gosh, you can already smell that. This is what it looks like right here. I think it's okay to get the carrots, onions, all that fun stuff in there. If you want to strain this out, just really get that gravy, that's fine too. Um, and you don't need a ton of this. We're really just trying to make enough to rehydrate the pulled meat. All right, that's probably good there. I'm gonna turn this off. Oh, you can see. It's kind of got that really nice consistency now. Got this pan right now on low. Um, I don't want to recook the meat. I just want to heat it up a little bit. So I'm going to add meat in. Again, you can really use any pan you want for this. Um, I don't like using cast iron though because uh, with the tomatoes and some other things in here, it is a little acidic uh, and you don't want to eat away at that coating, that beautiful seasoning in the cast iron skillet. We're going to take our peas. See now, if they're super thick mashed potatoes, you can't do this. I'm probably just gonna cook it uh, uncovered for about 35 minutes. You want it to be heated all the way through and uh, brown on the top. I Man, it's gonna be good. Almost too gorgeous to cook. Almost. This was in for about 35 minutes. Uh, bubbly around the edge, golden brown on the top. I checked the temperature in the middle. It's a nice 165, 168, which is perfect. Again, everything is cooked. So you just wanna heat it through and get that golden brown color. A Little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, a little chive to end. Uh, chives are key. All right, let's check the inside out. 